There are so many distortions about sex, so many wounds related to sex, and it lives right down there, taking the joy out of sex. Such a shame, because sex is one of the greatest pleasures humans can experience, one of the greatest pleasures. In the angelic realms, there's not sex, physical sex. It's kind of airy-fairy, and the entity just kind of go through right each, each other. But here on Earth, you can touch and smell and feel and taste another human. You can engage in a sensual intimacy that brings two souled beings together in a moment of love and ecstasy. And when was the last time you really, really felt that? Probably too long ago, if at all. There are many moral values about sex, and in most cultures and definitely most religions it is, it is taboo. At best it is not discussed. At best it is hidden somewhere else. But oftentimes it is outrightly called the work of the devil. You're not supposed to participate in it. It wasn't so f long ago that, that women weren't supposed to be able to enjoy it, that they were supposed to partake in it only for the purpose of bearing children. And that the men who were performing sex were doing it only for a very short-term physical gratification, a short-term release. There was tremendous, there is tremendous energy stealing going on in sex. There's even two people who supposedly love each other, perhaps even partners together, having sex. Most of the time, it is still energy stealing. There's such a heavy overlay in consciousness in humanity regarding sex that even if they don't consciously attempt to steal energy while supposedly making love, that's what they end up doing anyway. And after a while, sex becomes very unfulfilling for them from a heart level. But they're getting some energy out of it, so they continue. They continue to um, expand their boundaries, so to speak. They go out looking for other partners, even if they've made a commitment to only one. They participate in pornography. They get into some very distorted and twisted forms of a very beautiful energy. Sex is used in your everyday life in its distorted form. It's used in advertising and commercials to sell things that you don't necessarily need. Instead of speaking the truth in a commercial, they integrate the element of sex. It goes in at a different level. It, it goes into your mind and into your overall energy field at a different level than where truth goes. And in the consciousness of humanity right now, it's very sad to say that, that sex is second right. Sex is considered dark. Sex is considered a negative in most cases. The churches teach that, that sex, even with yourself, is something God loathes. You'll go to hell for it. And if you even begin to enjoy sex on a deep and open and free level, that it's going to displease God. This is a very, very heavy overlay on earth right now. Take a look at your own life, your own experiences with sex, starting back to perhaps when you were very young, into your early teens. Think about the, the shame and the guilt that might have been put upon you for doing this thing called masturbating. The shame and the guilt that was associated with your very first encounters with sex with another person. And think about how, how over the years the sex either became routine, boring, or you started looking everywhere else for fulfillment in your sexual ventures. The orgasms that humans are experiencing right now are so very limited and sometimes so dreadfully painful. We're not talking from a physical standpoint, but from an emotional standpoint. 
And this was supposed to be one of the greatest gifts that you gave yourselves when you came to earth, and it is it is so small in comparison to what it could be. These things, they should be so much more fulfilling and joyful. The energies that come from this, that that are shared between people, that are brought into oneself, are they are so tremendous. And right now, you you are inhibiting this process. All of you are. You are not allowing yourself to have joy. That's what it boils down to. You you try to bring yourself to a point of climax. You you struggle to get there. And and you have so many, I have to say, emotions tied up in this. And you wonder if you wonder if you are doing it right. You try to figure all this out. And oh, we would just rather start all over with this. And it could be so much more fulfilling if you release some of the concepts and some of the emotions you have around this. It is so fulfilling and so multidimensional. It is so sacred and spiritual, but it is it has been diminished over the ages of man. You've been made to feel shameful. You've been made to feel that it is something dirty and sinful. You've been told that you you're going to go to an eternal hell if you practice this outside of marriage. Whose rule does that sound like? It's not. A law of God, God asked you to go to earth and enjoy this thing. It used to be in the early days of Lemuria and even in somewhat into the days of Atlantis that, that sex and reproduction were two different things, you see, different orifices, so that you did not need to worry about getting pregnant by having pleasure. <laughs> Through all of this programming and all the struggling that that humanity has gone through, they they were combined, and they were also placed near the, I have to say, near the anus of the body, and they were all put together in the same area. And you are eliminating wastes from the same part of your body that you are trying to reproduce and enjoy pleasure. And, and dear friends, it is time for all of this to change. There was a time when you can enjoy the physical, emotional, and spiritual pleasures together, in in grand orgasm, in a beautiful, wonderful sharing with each other or by yourself. And this has been so distorted. If you're going to share sex with somebody, share your bodies and every part of you, start with some breathing before ripping off your clothes. <laughs> Even after you rip off your clothes, before you, um, how do you say, engage, do a little bit more breathing. When you engage with each other a little bit more breathing, you will have the greatest orgasm that you have ever had. So breathe that one in. On our side of the veil, we talk much of sex, much as you do. We talk about your sex lives. And yes, there are times, dear friends, when we even are available when you are making love like this, oh, we stand around and smile. <laughs> At times there is such tremendous symphony of energy that takes place between two people that care about each other. And to the one that asked the question just now, it does not matter to us one bit. If it is male and female, or two members of the same sex, we are not prejudiced in that regard. What we enjoy is the love that is made between the humans. Oh, it is, it is like your finest music. And we like to watch. But not in the voyeuristic way you may think. It it draws us, and we are amazed at what you are creating, the expressions of love, feelings of tenderness, all of this. It is, it is amazing. Dear friends, as we said earlier today, when spirit and all that is reflected for even a brief moment about who am I, 
instantly created, instantly created two separate beings, the king and the queen, that could look at each other in the eye and connect in the heart and love each other so much that they created an offspring called Jack. You are Jack. The love the Spirit brought you forth. You brought this attribute in a biological way to earth when two humans love each other. They can create offspring like Spirit did with you. When offspring is not even created, there is tremendous love and tremendous energy that is created. This energy that is created through the making of love between two humans does not then go out into the thin air and dissolve or go away. That energy, dear friends, of making love between humans is, how to say, collected by angels and it is delivered in the appropriate manner into the new creation, the new universe that you are creating even at this very moment. This is the most potent of all energies that is used in creating the second circle that you are in. You started with a void. You are now building a second circle. As we have said, one day, the first circle, the first creation, will move into the second circle, the second creation that you are building now. The most potent energy for this is the energy when two humans make love. That is why we like to watch. Conversely, dear friends, when there is sex and it does not involve love, and when there is sex that involves control or abuse of another, when there is dominance from one to the other, when there is addiction to this, this also attracts energy. It does not attract the type of angels and entities that you work with. It attracts Mm, ones that are rather earthbound, ones that mm, whose energy would not like so much, you would call it dark, and they will converge around this this controlling type of sex, and they will be fed the energy from that also. Mm, again, we caution the use of terms here, for we talk in symbols many times, but in that type of sex, in that type of situation, a energy is produced that would feed what you would call the dark entities. Mm. And we thank you for your question. And mm, do not be so concerned that we are going to be coming into your bedroom all of the time. Mm. 